chapter 11. Stay just Piper. When I wake up this morning, the first thing I do is look outside the little window. The light is gray. Snow pecks against the glass, making tiny ticking sounds. Everything is white. Down in the lobby, breakfast stuff is lined up on two long tables. Mama makes us each drink a small carton of milk before we can have a donut. Dylan cries when Mama tells him he can have two bananas, but not two donuts. I bet Daddy gets to eat all the donuts he wants over at his shelter. Thinking about Daddy makes me sad. I hear Mama say, Oh no, we don't need to apply for food stamps. We've just hit a little rough patch, that's all. This patch that we've been in for the last four months seems like a football field full of briars, if you ask me. But no one does. Or has. I feel a light touch on my arm. It's the girl with the long black hair. Hi, she says, smiling with powdered sugar dusted lips. Hi, I say. You're new here, right? Yes, I say. We came here from Abilene, Texas, but, I add, I was born and raised in Louisiana. She nods. We came from a town north of here. We've been here for one week and four days. I think about Mama sleeping on the floor between our two cots and the tiny window and the mouse droppings behind the wooden chair and Daddy living across the street. A week feels like a very long time. We won't be here that long, I say, glancing over at Mama. She's got storm clouds in her eyes. Not a good thing. The girl with the long black hair sips her juice box and nods. We're hoping to get in the family shelter any day now. Maybe we can be friends there. Mama grabs Dylan's hand and marches over in our direction. I hear myself say what I've heard Daddy say a million times over the last few months. We won't be staying here long. We'll be moving on to something better with more opportunities soon. Or the best thing, go back home. Mama gives the girl a tight smile then says to me, breakfast is over. Your brother can't be trusted around donuts. Dylan hangs his head and sniffles. The girl smiles. Brothers, she says, you're lucky you have just one. I roll my eyes. Halfway across the lobby, she calls. My name's Gabriella. By the way, Gabby for short. My name's Piper, just Piper. After Mama gets Dylan cleaned up, we bundle into our coats and gloves and hats and meet Daddy out front. Dylan leaps into Daddy's arms with a yip. I wish I could too. Instead, I just say, hey, Daddy. He reaches out and pulls me to him. Hey, chicken, you doing okay? I'm okay, Daddy, I say against his new wool coat. It already smells like him. Daddy lifts Dylan up and onto his shoulders while we wait for the bus. I can see the whole world, Dylan sings. I take off a glove and run my hand over the snow resting on the bench. It's cold and wet and melts as soon as I touch it. I bring my fingers to my lips to taste it. Mmm, snow. Piper, Daddy says, frowning down at me. He shakes his head. It's dirty. But how could something so white, so new, be dirty? I take off my other glove and not looking at him, bury my hand beneath the snow. We spend all day standing in lines, lines at the employment office and lines at the unemployment office. Dylan ate too many donuts at breakfast, so he has the sugar crazies. I about wear myself out completely, trying to keep him from turning everything upside down and getting us kicked out. Then we walk three blocks through the wet, cold snow to wait in another line at the Department of Human Services. My red high tops have turned into popsicles. Dylan's sugar's worn off and turned him into a screaming, whining Mimi. 
I try my best to distract him with I spy, but it doesn't work at all. By the time we get to the front of the line, most of Mama's hair has come loose from her braid and Daddy has a twitch in his eyelid. <laughs> I am almost asleep on my feet when I hear my mother say in a voice I've never heard, you've got to be kidding me. My eyes pop open. Mama's face goes red and then white. She's quivering all over. I haven't seen her look like this since Grandma Bess's funeral. The woman behind the glass divider taps a sign taped to the window with her red fingernail. It says right here, children under the age of 16 must have birth certificates in order to apply for general assistance. Mama looks at the woman as if she has two heads. And then I see something shift in Mama's eyes. Look, she says, I understand the need for rules, really, I do. Mama leans in closer and puts on her best practical voice. And I know you're doing the best job you can. She glances at the woman's name tag. Mrs. Fulton? I relax just a little. Mama will get this straightened out. But, Mama continues nodding to us, we've never been in this situation before. All we want is for our babies to be safe and warm with food in their bellies. The last thing on my mind was birth certificates. She blinks back real tears. You can understand that, can't you? The woman sighs. She taps the sign again a little less enthusiastically this time. Sorry, she says, these are the rules. If daddy weren't holding a sleeping Dylan, I think his fist would go right through that glass. The woman leans to the side and looks around Mama. Next! It's snowing again. I think I still like the snow, but not the cold. I pull the hood up on my coat and trudge through the slush to the bus stop. We'll wait in line again to eat our supper at the 6th Street Community Kitchen. I'm so hungry and cold and tired even canned green beans with their weird squeak and that gray goopy gravy sound real good right about now. I feel snow sting my cheeks and tears sting my eyes. I look around for that old woman and her little dog. Baby, I sure could use a dose of dog medicine right about now. And then something catches my attention. It's a flyer stapled to a pole. At the top of the flyer, it says in big letters, Firefly Girls Troop 423 meets tonight. I stop and look at the smiling girls on the flyer. I don't bother reading what it says. I just look at those huge smiles, shining eyes, and familiar electric blue and yellow uniforms. I loved being a firefly girl. I loved the songs and crafts and field trips. I loved earning pins and badges. And I was the best top earning gourmet brownie seller in our troop back home in Cypress Point. But most of all, I love the friends I made being part of something. The bus pulls up, splashing cold, dirty water on my jeans. I turn away from Firefly Troop 423 and climb onto the bus. Daddy settles into a seat, holding Dylan. He doesn't look at me or Mama, but I can see the muscle in his jaw working. Mama always said Daddy may be a man of few words, but his face and hands speak volumes. When daddy's jaw muscle works like that, it means he's worried and frustrated. I slide into an empty seat a couple of rows back. Mama plops down next to me with a sigh. <sighs> what a day, she says. I'm too tired to say anything. The Firefly Girls Troop motto is, let your light shine. 
I don't feel very shiny right now. Mama looks down at my wet, dirty shoes. I look down at hers. <laughs> They're not in much better shape. She shakes her head and brushes her hair away from my face. It never crossed my mind we'd need different shoes. Me neither, I say. I never knew snow would be so wet or cold, Mama adds. The corner of her mouth twitches. Or white, I giggle, and fall straight from the sky, Mama crows. Don't ask me why, but me and Mama both start laughing so hard we can't stop. Who knew? I gasp between giggles. Mama makes her eyes big and round. Who knew? <laughs> Daddy looks at us like we have completely lost our minds. <laughs> we probably have. He shakes his head and turns around. Mama wipes tears off her cheeks and leans her head on my shoulder. Oh, Piper, she says. What in the world would I do without you? <laughs> she takes my hand and squeezes it three times for I squeeze back twice. How much? In answer, she squeezes my hand so hard, I know I'll feel that squeeze even when I'm asleep.